Hi everybody, we're delighted today to be starting our first Youth Pledge for Employers Virtual Careers Fair. Um, Youth Pledge is a project that's running across Norfolk and Suffolk, uh, engaging um, businesses to support young people. And we're absolutely delighted to have Thomas Wiskin, who's Director of ASAMS here today, to talk to us about um, engineering and his organisation. So Thomas, I will hand over to you. Just get this started. Brilliant, thank you. There we go. You'll see the slide. Morning. Fantastic, we can see it. Sorry. Morning, my name's Thomas Wiskin. I'm the director at ASAMS and I'm here to give you a talk today about working in a metal testing laboratory. So as a metallurgical testing laboratory, we're a destructive metal testing laboratory, so we break things for a living. If you've ever been told you're heavy handed, this might be the career path for you. Almost everything that comes into ASAMS is destroyed during testing. And through these tests, we aim to understand how a material will perform when in use. Uh, another service is we also forensically look at failed components to understand how they failed and advise how this could be prevented in future. And finally, we offer consultancy to advise um, suitable materials or processes for new products for companies. Um, a little of the company history, we've been going 32 years. Um, it was originally the destructive testing laboratory for a wider, uh, bigger testing company, oil field testing services. Um, there are still several companies in the Yarmouth area which resulted from the breakup of, of that larger company. Um, traditionally, the majority of ASAM's work has come from the oil and gas sector. Um, traditionally, always this was uh, in the start, this was North Sea oil and gas, but now our work can be found on projects worldwide. Uh, in more recent times, ASAM's has worked on everything from satellites and aeroplanes to sports cars and nuclear generators. Within ASAMS, there are three main career paths. There's the test technician, a manual machinist, a metallurgist, and they have quite separate skills, but I'll go into that further. As a manual machinist, um, they're responsible for taking the items that are de delivered to ASAMS, um, such as the pipe shown in the photos, and preparing um, items, for, uh, preparing them for testing. Um, they do this by ver using various manual machining techniques to prepare test samples which comply with written and verbal instructions given to them by the technicians. They need to be able to interpret these instructions and use their experience and knowledge to produce the correct test piece. Uh, finally, the machinists are then responsible for verifying samples by measurement to ensure they meet the requirements uh, given to them. We specify the shown qualifications, but for this role, we also train staff in-house um, through apprenticeships and that kind of thing. Um, second job type is the test technician. Um, these, this role carries out the vast majority of testing within ASAMS and they perform various mechanical corrosion tests in, in accordance with company procedures. Uh, some of these tests are shown on the right in some short videos. Um, I'll just start those off. Um, the test technician is very much a, a client facing role where they're required to work with customers to ensure testing is in accordance with their requirements. And they need to understand and interpret published standards. And finally, they need to communicate results with uh, and their meaning to clients. Um, the qualifications for these this type of role is shown, um, but we also train in-house from almost no technical background. The last type of role we have at ASAMS is the metallurgist role. This is the most academically demanding role in the company. Um, they're expected to support test technicians in the day to day testing, but then they're also responsible for all the metallurgical testing carried out by the company. Um, metallurgists are, work with clients um, with, for the failures to understand any failed components that are sent in, and then they're responsible for planning and carrying out and reporting on the investigation um, and to advise on hopefully a cause of failure. Um, as an example of a, a failure investigation, most people know the Titanic sunk because it hit an iceberg, but one of the big contributing factors was actually 
the water temperature at the time was around zero degrees and because of this the metal the ship was made of was very brittle so when it hit the iceberg it behaved uh, in a way it wasn't designed to it, it cracked um, uh, which were, uh, when it was designed it was designed to behave duct ductile nature so it would dent but not necessarily crack and the, the size of the crack along the ship actually let so much water in that it was it, that it eventually sank um, as a minimum for the metallurgist role would require a degree in metallurgy um, and uh, in addition to this we require excellent IT written and verbal communication skills um, with this slide I've tried to give you an idea of the, the skills mix the different skills for each role um, at one end you have the manual machinists whose day-to-day -day job is very hands-on with, with only a, a small bit of, of reading of specifications and things like that. At the other end, you have the metallurgist, which is largely a desk-based job, um, but there is some hands-on work. And in the middle, you have the test technician, where you have a, a, a sort of a, some, a nice mix between the two different types of, um, of work, of hands-on and, and desk-based work. And now I have a quick video that sort of demonstrates day what a day at ASAM roughly looks like and you, you see the various testing roles here so play that for you most of the items turn up uh, delivered by couriers etc and these take various forms as you'll see here um, it's just unloading this we have as you can see a pipe there that's a section that's prepared just for our testing the square samples and the other pieces are from older offshore structures that were sent for, to us for analysis. We, we measure everything that comes in to ensure it, it matches what the client's expecting. And then all the jobs are sort of booked into the system. We speak to clients, ensure they understand what testing they're looking for, what we can achieve. Um, and then this is prepared and then booked into a, a, an IT system and then instructions are sent to the machine shop where they start to cut and prepare the test samples that are required and they use various different machining techniques we've got saws we use a lot there's also mills and grinders for surface preparation that are all used in various ways to to form the final test piece um, as dictated by sort of standards this is a tensile test piece you actually see in test later on. Uh, this is some final preparation by a test technician for, for testing. And then this is a tensile test where you're just pulling the metal. And you can see there, this is a toughness test. So this is similar uh, to the, we use, we test samples at various temperatures down to minus 196 to see how they perform uh, when, when hit with a hammer essentially. These are various corrosion tests, so we put materials in different corrosive environments to see how they perform. Um, this is our metallurgist role looking at the microstructure of a material using one of our microscopes on site. And then the result of all these tests are logged back into the computer system. A final test report is produced, which is checked for accuracy, checked that it meets the client's requirements, that kind of thing. And then this is signed off and sent to the clients. And then sometimes clients may require explanation of their testing results. You can see here just a demonstration of that. We're just checking that it meets their requirements and they understand what they've been given. So that, that's what a day at ASAMS typically looks like. And then final, some final points. Um, there are a lot of skills that you can, soft skills that I think are looked for, for with employee, employers that um, you can work on and would be generally applicable for any job you're applying for. Strong IT skills I think are a must in today's day and age. Um, nearly all jobs now require some form of IT work. Um, working well within a team, excellent communication is, is another great asset to have as a potential employee and a good attention to detail um, for us is, is vital but, but all jobs sort of benefit from that. And some other points I think find a job that matches your skills and interests or matches the type of work you enjoy because you're going to spend a lot of time at work and so enjoying it is, is important 
And uh, probably a final point, these days careers are often long and varied. Where you start is often not where you're going to finish your career. So don't fret too hard about making the first choice of of a job because it's unlikely that you'll still be there by the time you come to retirement. I think that's everything. Thank you for listening. Um, My email is on the slide. If you have any questions for me, feel free to contact me and um, I'm free for questions now. Thomas, that was absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. I really love the video showing kind of like a a day in the life at ASAMS. And I think that's one of the things for young people. Sometimes it's really hard to imagine yourself working somewhere. Um, So for young people joining your organisation, tell us a bit about sort of those entry level positions. You mentioned that sometimes you take on people and you what sort of things are you looking for when you take people on you obviously covered some of the skills there and then would you be able to tell us then about how they might go on to do apprenticeships yeah sure so so when we're looking at employing at entry level we we look for probably a base level of good uh, writing verbal communication skills Um, But then a lot of the soft skills around that, like demonstration of teamwork, um, ability to work in teams, being able to to focus on a task. So showing examples of those in in CVs and in interview is um, probably uh, very important for those Um, in terms of because what we do is quite specialist. We then will take people on an entry level and then we we will put them through apprenticeships using uh, local colleges as needed or even um, some distance learning support uh, right. it, it can vary depends on the role but yeah we've employed um, apprentices for the machine shop are obviously quite more traditional because it's, it's the manual machining route is quite a well-defined route whereas the technician and the metallurgist are, are sort of different roles yeah. um, and is that like a level two or level three apprenticeship we would just look at the um, as a small company, we, we, we sort of would just work with the, the candidate oh, if we brilliant. found something we thought was suitable and showed the right range of skills and, and should demonstrate an ability to learn. We would we would sort of look at any sort of level of entry, really. Oh, fantastic. That's really uh, that's really good to hear. And one um, often a challenge for young people is sort of perhaps sometimes a lack of kind of work experience. And with the pandemic, you know, work experience has been extra hard to come by. What sort of things could people be talking to you about or showing you that they were going to do about, you know, what to show you that they're work ready? What might you advise people to do? Um, I, I think always some work experience is, is 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 useful to demonstrate, um, even if it's just a casual job if, if you're shown that you you turn up you've got a, a, a history of employment with someone of of turning up on time and and um, being present when when required and, and yeah. doing what's needed and um, that's always good but other things we look for um working within teams sports teams or teams within um school um uh, different, right. different academic teams anything like that um, is, a, is always a good demonstration uh, of skills that are, are generally required. Um, yeah, so, so any anything really, and um, just just if you've got an interest, being able to talk about an interest, the it's things you enjoy, um, demonstrating, going out and and starting things on your own is always good as well. Shows self starter, self motivation. Okay. That's really helpful. Thank you. And do you have sort of other roles that are available alongside engineering? Do you have other functions in your organisation that you recruit for? It, not at the moment. All of the um, sort of um, non-technical roles are, are filled as part of the job roles of the technical people currently. Ah, oh, right. OK, so you're kind of really maximising people's sort of their, everything, the sort of the base of what they can cover. That's really helpful to understand. Yeah, definitely. That's that's one thing with working, I suppose, with a, I guess we've we sort of termed a micro business, um, is when you join these smaller companies, you're going to be asked to fulfil sort of multiple roles. So it's quite good early in a career because you get you get experience of, of a wide range of, of different um, skills and environments and challenges that you might not at a bigger company where you'll just go in and, and work a specific role. Yeah, I think that's very true about 
sort of the like you say that breadth of opportunity that you often get sort of working in a in a smaller organization and um, you said at the beginning which I really liked about how like if you're heavy-handed this could be the job for you uh, I'm someone who things come off in my hand all the time so I might be a perfect recruit but um if what are they what would you say if you were sort of thinking about the three most sort of essential characteristics for being successful in your industry what sort of personality traits what what have you noticed makes people successful in your organization um i'd probably say number one be attention to detail yeah um, just just being able to obviously what we do is is quite focused and you need a, a, a certain level of accuracy for any tests the way they're tested the ensuring the results are accurate those kind of things um the team team working again just being able to communicate with people uh, there's a lot of soft skills involved we try and write and record everything down but but naturally within a business there's a lot of um verbal communication that goes on in addition to that being able to listen and, and respond to those and then uh i did have one in my head but it's gone <laughs> that's all right that's I really liked as well that you touched on the fact that people have really long careers now. We're looking at, you know, potentially people having sort of five decade long careers over time. And I, I really like that you sort of reflected on that, that where you start may not be where you finish. And um, what was your journey into your industry? So I, um, yeah, I was looking to go to university and do a chemistry degree, but I didn't get the A-levels that I required for that and um i was the first person in my family with the opportunity to go to university so i, I got told by my uh parents that either i went to university and done something or i needed to go out on my own uh, <laughs> there and then so i uh, went through clearing system and just found a science degree at a good university right. and that's how i ended up in um material science um, and it, and it, I, I found it was a, a good match for, for my skills. I think pure science is, is not really where I am. I, I think um, the more science engineering hybrid role that, that material science is, is, um, is part of is, is, is where my skills lie um, and best suited me. And then, yeah, I finished the degree and I went and worked um, digging holes in the ground as a ground worker for a year and right. uh, I think whilst doing that and freezing I decided it was time <laughs> I probably should s s look at getting a, a career started so I just was applying for jobs online and ended up coming up to ASAMS and that was 2009 and I've, I've been here ever since and since joining the company I've uh, completed a master's degree um, wow. And uh, yeah, and done my chartered engineering um, accreditation and, and various things like that. Fantastic. And just sort of in our last couple of minutes, I'm just sort of interested because obviously after you finished university, you had your year digging holes outside. Yeah. Um, if you were able to go back and have a conversation with your younger self, um, starting off on your career journey, what sort of advice would you give yourself? Um. I would I'd probably say you can almost never have too much education education never closes doors to you it only leaves them open um, and that's probably probably I would have I would have probably stayed and, and possibly done my master's degree straight after my degree looking back but um, I, I think don't worry too much about where you end up I mean certainly um, just just to spend a year digging holes taught me about just just getting your head down and, and getting on with a job and also made me appreciate now when I'm not stood in the freezing cold doing those <laughs> types of jobs that, that, that it, on the worst day I have here at least I'm not in a <laughs> or somewhere oh Thomas that has been absolutely brilliant thank you so much for your time